English by the Nature Method, Chapter Thirty Four, the Thirty Fourth Chapter, The Parks of London. At lunch the next day, they discussed the buildings they had seen in London. We have now got an impression of the buildings of London, but we should also like to see its many fine and big parks," said Wood. We have often read about them in the newspapers, and sometimes even, and sometimes we have seen pictures of them, too. But a picture does not give a real impression of them. I think one must see them in reality to get the right impression. Yes," answered Mr. Miller. "That would be a good idea for today's trip. But you speak of the parks of London as if you could see them all in a day. You really can't see more than one or two at, mo at the most. In one day." I propose that we go to Regent's Park first. From there, we can go through Baker Street and Oxford Street to Hyde Park. And while we are on our way, we might stop and have some tea somewhere in Oxford Street. They did as Mr. Miller proposed and took a bus to Regent's Park. In this park are the well-known zoological gardens of London. They went in to look at the animals. Mr. Miller told the young men that Londoners call the zoological gardens the zoo for short. They stood for a long time watching the monkeys playing with each other. This is the monkey. They are so funny," said Brown, "that I could watch them for hours. Suddenly, one of the monkeys put out his hand and took an umbrella. This is an umbrella. From a little girl who was standing nearby, the umbrella was not open, but a few minutes later, the monkey had got it open. It was so funny to see the monkey running about with the umbrella that all the people who watched it had to laugh, except the little girl. They also went to see the snakes, which interested Wood very much. And after having seen the other animals, they left Regent's Park and went to a restaurant in Oxford Street for tea. What a big place this is! The young men said as they entered the restaurants. It's the largest we have ever seen. What is the name of it? The Marble Arch Corner House. Mr. Miller answered. Yes, it's a long name. He said, laughing at the look of surprise on the young men's faces. I'll explain it to you while we are having our tea. When the tea had been served, he explained, "This is one of the many restaurants and tea rooms which the big firm of Lyons has all over England. In London alone, there are hundreds of them, and each one is called the Lyons." The very first big one was in a corner house, that is, a house built where two streets cross each other. The restaurant was therefore called a corner house, and now the four or five biggest Lyons restaurants are called corner houses, even if they are not situated at corners. You will be surprised, perhaps, to hear that one or two of the corner houses never close, but have rooms that are open day and night. Now you know what a corner house is. This one is called the Marble Arch Corner House because it's only one or two minutes from Marble Arch, a big arch built of marble situated just outside the entrance to Hyde Park. This is the arch. Marble is a very expensive and beautiful stone, which is often shining and white. This is the stone. Marble Arch was built for King George the Fourth. As an entrance to Buckingham Palace, but after it had been built, they found that it was too narrow for the king's carriage to pass through it. In 1851, it was moved from Buckingham Palace to this corner of Hyde Park. It cost eighty thousand pounds to build. Now it just stands there, and nobody uses it. It's even closed, so that you can't get through it, but have to go round it. But the Londoners like it, and tourists go to see it. There is always much traffic round Mar Marble Arch, and at night, when the lights are on, it's beautiful to look at. There are always people standing round it, selling different things, newspapers, fruit, chocolate, etc. It has really become part of London, a part which the Londoners like very much. But if you have finished your tea, we might walk round it before entering the park, so that you may see it from all sides. I will pay the bill while you finish your bread and butter. You seem to eat a lot," the teacher said, laughing, "because you are always the last of us to finish." They crossed Oxford Street and entered the park, and just inside they found a lot of people standing round a speaker who had got up 
on a soapbox to speak. They listened to him and tried to understand what he was saying, but could hear very little. This is a thing which you will find in many places in England, said Mr. Miller. If a man wants to speak about something, he can bring a box to stand on and say what he likes. Nobody will stop him, and there will always be someone out walking who stops on his way to listen to his talk or laugh at him. On the way through the park, they came to the Serpentine, a long lake which looks like a snake or a serpent, and which people may be. In the evenings, in summer, Mr. Miller told them there are bands or orchestras playing in the park, and there are always many people who come to listen to them. But we cannot stop tonight. Perhaps we can come this way some other evening and hear one of the bands play. Look! He said suddenly and stopped them. Now I will show you something funny, which I think will surprise you. They looked and saw a flock of sheep. Is this really a flock of sheep in the centre of London? They shouted in surprise. Yes, sheep, the teacher replied. Real sheep. They move about the park to eat the grass, so that it does not get too long. They finished their walk through the park at Hyde Park Corner, and Mr. Miller told them that, that it is the place which has the most traffic in the, in the whole world. It was not difficult for them to understand this, because it was several minutes before they were able to cross to the other side of the street. 